Never let anybody see you sweat. So I was born in New York City, and I lived there until I was eight years old. I realized that I was a much better talker than I was a listener. I don't know what to say. I just don't like what you're saying. Sorry, Your Honor. I ended up going to law school at Georgetown, and I was a prosecutor for Janet Reno. I loved it, because it was so raw. Were you cheating on her? Yeah, sure. OK. All rise. Our show will be a mixture of education. I think you're misreading the law a little bit. And entertainment. <laughs> my main goal is justice and the law. That's been my legacy, and the legacy I hope to continue into the future with this show. Kathy Manfred claimed she was promised a guest house during a family emergency, but then her friend changed her mind. Marsha Stevens says she opened her home to the plaintiff instead, but her offer was refused. Okay, Ms. Manfred, you are suing Ms. Stevens for $640 that it cost you when she went back on a promise. Tell me what happened. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for having me, Your Honor. I've known her, Marsha, for over a decade, 10 years. We've been um, riding and die friends. I met her in church, praise and worship team. But she really let me down when I really needed her. She dropped me like a hot potato. Okay. You know, so the situation is my husband is very sick. His health is declining. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. It was very stressful for me. I live in L.A., and I had to find a, a care facility in um, Santa, Santa, Santa Barbara. Yeah, Santa, Santa Barbara? Yeah, it's close to her. Okay, and, and how was, far is that from L.A.? Well, it's two hours, but with traffic, you know, about four hours. You yeah. Know, traffic, so the commute was horrible for me, a strain. I could not take it. And plus, I'm going through all the situation, and I don't have a lot of money at this time because of, you know, the financial hardship. And so my friend, I asked her if I could, you know, if she could hold me down for six months, which I have held her down plenty of time. And she told me, oh, no problem. That's what we do. That's what friends are for. But she reneged on me. Okay, so just tell me something. How, how was she going to do that? She was going to have you move in where? In her guest house. Okay, because like she a has a guest house. house. And yes, you know that because you visited or yes. how did you know she had a guest house? Yes, ma'am. I visit her home several times. You okay, know, we've been friends. so you ask her, can I stay at your guest house? Were you going to be paying any rent or no? No, no rent because I needed her to hold me down. Financially, I'm stressed at this time. I'm at a bad point at this time, and okay. I really need a friend to be a friend, to step in and show me that you're my friend, okay. like I did her, Your Honor. Well, and it sounds like she was willing to do that, but then what happened? But then what happened was... Her daughter, which I love dearly and I understand, she, a week before me moving down there, okay. she texted me and said, her daughter is having some situation, a marriage or whatever, some problem. Well, it's called a divorce. Oh, a divorce. Okay. Oh, okay. And so her, <laughs> so her daughter had to occupy the, the or she wanted... She her daughter me. wanted and she allowed her daughter to occupy the back house. The guest My house. daughter and my she, grandchildren, Your Honor. Okay, but oh, she how dropped many me kids? back a, a, okay, a hot potato. Okay, give me potato. one second. How, how, how many kids does your daughter have? Three, and okay. she was a stay-at-home mom. Okay. Um, so she calls you, and you had already promised it to her. Um, I know it's yeah. not ideal, but y so you didn't... How many... Uh, how big is the guest house? It's a one-bedroom with a full living room, full okay. bath. So, and, Your Honor, I have to tell you, Let's not get Kathy twisted. Kathy is that person that there's always drama, there's always a problem. She doesn't call me unless there's a problem. I met her through church approximately maybe 10 years ago. I moved to Santa Barbara five years ago. And during that time, we kept in touch. I liked Kathy. She was always the life of the party. We called her Chatty Kathy. She liked but, me, but uh, I but love her, Your Honor. Okay, all right, okay. all right. Please don't talk to each other or interrupt each other anymore. So go on. So... When she called me, I opened up the guest house immediately. There was no issue. When she told me that her husband was ill, I said, no problem, come, come now if you needed to. And she said that she would. However, a week before that she was supposed to come, my daughter called me crying on the phone stating that her marriage was absolutely over and that she was filing for divorce and needed a place to stay. So me being her mother, 
and, and my daughter not having any other options, I said yes, that she could come back home. And I sent The Kat main house has how many bedrooms? Four. So, Your Honor. I, and who's living there right now? Just my husband and I. Right. So I, I'm just, I guess I'm curious, why didn't you then say to her, hey, I, uh, the kids are noisy, I want them in the back house, I don't want them in, in the house, but you are welcome to one of the empty three bedrooms that are here. Like, I, I guess I'm just wondering. Your Honor, I did that. I did that. After I sent Kathy the text, I called her. I called her several times, and it took her a while to get back to me, but she didn't take the offer. What's the offer you made to her? To come and stay in the home, in the main house. Coming up on Justice for the People. Unbelievable. And you know, this is a Christian woman at the front of the church every Sunday. This one here. Oh, you in the front with me. Okay, all right. But I don't have Advil in my coffee the morning before. And later. I've spent money, years, emotional, investment, uh, you name it, I've been disposable to her. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. We're back with the case of Kathy Manfred, who brought Marcia Stevens to court over a broken promise. Did she make that offer to you? The main house, yes. I don't want to sound unappreciative, but the main house is uh, a little room versus a big guest Oh, so the, that so free place stood. wasn't as good as the first free no, place. No, it wasn't that it wasn't good enough. It's just that I had to put my stuff I'm sorry, you're storage. talking about how you needed, you know, you needed to put, you, you needed someone to be there for you, and then she's explaining that she offered this, and you didn't take that. And now she has to pay you six hundred and forty dollars. Where is it? How do you arrive at the six hundred and forty dollars? Because the store, she inconvenienced me. Because by I had only to put, allowing you to stay in the main house. Well, but your honor, it, the, Go ahead. the furniture and all of that stuff. Well, you were doing I, that anyway, though, right? Like you put your stuff in storage because your husband was sick, was in a, 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 a full-time care facility, and you wanted to be in Santa Barbara. So you were doing that no matter what, right? Okay, and so that's part of what you're suing for. You feel like she should pay for your storage, but she didn't create the situation that was making you come to Santa By the way, you ended up in Santa Barbara, right? Yes, ma'am. And what I are you doing? To, are you paying rent? Well, I had to, a friend of a friend, because the money that I was supposed to so save. So you're not paying rent, another friend. Yes, I'm paying you rent. You are paying rent. Wouldn't yes. it have been better to stay with her in? Well, that's, I wanted the guest house oh. because I could, you know, I wouldn't have to really pay. Yeah, I want the guest house too. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, what we're dealing with here is a situation where someone m m makes a gift to you. And it's not a contract, it's a gift. And well, I made plenty of gifts for her. Okay, but that's honor. not the point. We don't sit down and look at friendships and figure out who gave more gifts. You know, it's not like she changed her mind and just pulled the rug out from under you. Something catastrophic happened to her daughter. Her marriage was over with three little, how many okay, kids? Okay, but what three? about? Three little but kids. But what about me that Wait, she Wait, but I'm sorry. So me. what should happen? You think that what she should have done is put the daughter and the kids in the main house and then let you have full reign of your own private living room and bedroom there. Well, what she should have done is not made a promise at all. I could have went somewhere else. She didn't leave you I, high and dry. She gave you an option. But the little you room. You just didn't is, like the option. But you the liked little the, room, your honor, the, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you like I, a privacy. I needed a guest. If yeah, she you didn't said, just want a hand out. You wanted a really good one. Right? I mean, listen, I you're either in a pickle or you're not. Honor, I don't understand. Right? She's still offering you a free place to live, and it's with her. That's an inconvenience for her. Uh, but she's willing to do it because she pulled the rug out from under you so late with the daughter thing because that's not within her control when her daughter's marriage ends. And so she's giving that to the daughter because there's four of them and there's one of you and she's inviting you to live with her and you're like, no, I'm not doing that. Did she get mad at you? Yes. She felt offended saying that I had the audacity to offer her a room versus the guest house. Really? Unbelievable. And you know, this is a Christian woman at the front of the church every Sunday. This one here. Oh, you're in the front with me. Okay, all right. But I don't have Advil in my coffee the morning before. Well, don't worry about what it. What is Advil in your coffee? Because mean? Saturday night she was having too much fun. 
Okay, well, well, I'm allowed to have fun on a Saturday night. Why, why are you telling her she can't? She's at the front of their church. She's at the front of their church. And, and do you ask what? What's the problem Christians? with her? Wait a minute. What's the problem with her being morning. at the front of the church having fun on a Saturday night? I believe if, if we weren't supposed to have fun, God wouldn't be letting us have so much fun. It God. wouldn't make things so fun. So <laughs> She's one of those people who, as you can see, Sin on, on Saturday, this, repent on Sunday. <laughs> right. Yeah, but and, that, not, <laughs> and not thankful and grateful. Not you thankful and grateful. Sin, you can the see. First okay, everybody just stop listen up guys I, I have I have let me explain to you what this is this is a concept in the law that that's called an enforceable promise okay a, a promise an empty promise with no a, normally in a contract you're hiring her to fix your roof and she is charging you two thousand dollars there's a contract each of you are giving something up she's She's giving up two grand, you're giving up your time and expertise to fix the roof. That's a contract. Each side gives up something. Quid pro quo, it's called, okay? But then every blue moon in the law, most times if I say, I'm going to give you a million dollars, and then I don't give you the million dollars, you can't come sue me for the million dollars. That's just an empty promise that I made. But some promises can be acted upon and in very specific circumstances, such as when someone takes action based on your promise. I think what she's saying here is, hey, she promised me that, and therefore I uh, put my, my stuff in storage and came down. Except for it's not true, because two things. Number one, uh, she could still come down and put her stuff in storage. All she had to do was take, in her mind, a lesser room in the four-bedroom house. And number two, she was already going to put her stuff in storage because she came down to be by her husband. So neither of those two things are true. In this case, I am ruling in favor of the defendant. Thank you. All right. Judge Millian has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim is denied. Kathy, I still consider you my friend, and my heart and my home will always be open to you. Thank you. Coming up. This woman, Jackie, uh, slid into my DMs. She's also a manager, but she's in Atlanta, um, and he's based out of Winder, Georgia, which is a really small town, you know, and I was ready to break out of that. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. Music manager Liam Ortega claims his client fired him after he paid for an expensive listening party to launch her first album. Zoe Morgan says Mr. Ortega is a small town guy and she's ready for the bright lights on the big city. Mr. Ortega, you are suing Ms. Morgan for $9,500 that you believe she owes you when she fired you as her manager or let you go as her manager. Talk to me, tell me what's happening. Yes, Your Honor, I am a music manager and Zoe was my former artist. I cultivated her for the last four years, her what musical does that mean? talent. I grew her talent, you know, I introduced her to people, I got her lessons, all, etc. I grew her talent to be the artist she is today, and she used all that as leverage to find a new manager to take her wherever. Right. I, I'm left high and dry. I've spent money, years, emotional, investment, uh, you name it. I've been disposable to her, and I, I have nothing to show for it. You're taking this very personally. Let's talk about uh, what your rights are and aren't. Can I ask you, um, did you have a contract with her? Uh, we did have a contract. For May I see the contract? Thank you. All right. Now, specifically, the money that you're suing for is for a listening party that you invested in just before she left you, right? Talk yes. to me about that. Well, see, I had been growing her talent for the last four years. She didn't really know what she was doing. I mean, she was a very raw talent, you know. But I saw a lot in her at that time. You know, I, I saw that she had some star potential. So over the, the next couple of years, I would attend her shows. I would, you know, uh, right. I got it, it. But, but your like, rights I, I, are in the I, contract. I spent a lot of time I and effort. I, I know you're disappointed. To, to this point, right? Culminating. Tell me in about us. the listening party. It, that was my question. Coming up. Are you grateful for his contributions? Uh, yes. I know. Why'd you dump him by text then? <laughs> well, that is so lame. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. 
We're back with the case of Liam Ortega and singer Zoe Morgan over money spent furthering her music career. We produced an album for her. Okay. As part of our contractual agreement. And your uh, contractual agreement was for how long? For three years. Well, let's see. She had the right to renew after a year. The right to cancel, you mean? To, to Either renew. party has the right to terminate this contract on August 31st, and if it isn't, it will automatically renew for another year for a maximum of three years. So yep. either of you can bail on the 31st of August of what year? Uh, uh, of what year? When this is year, this? Your Honor. This year. All right. Um, okay. We, we had, as far as I knew, every intention to renew. Okay. I booked this listening party with the full intention of what introducing... What day was the listening party? Uh, it was for... Uh, it was August, August 24th. 24th, Your Honor. Okay. And how many people went to the... Li What's a listening party? Well, really, that, that, is, that is a chance for an artist to show her, 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 showcase her new album. Uh, see, we produced it. Uh, 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 she performed it. Uh, we invited all of her fans. And I, I invited industry people to okay. this event. Record execs, uh, uh, press. I promoted it. You know, I, 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 I booked the venue. Uh, I spent Okay, my but you own also money. signed the contract that says that she has a right to bail on August 31st. You set the, les the listening party for August 24th. All right, what happened? I felt like, you know, it's time for me to hit the big time. And so I was posting on social media all of my songs, and this woman, Jackie, uh, slid into my DMs. She's also a manager, but she's in Atlanta, um, and he's based out of Winder, Georgia, which is a really small town, you know, and I was ready to break out of that. So she slid into my DMs and said she really believed in me and wanted to sign me as one of her artists. Are you grateful? For, do you feel like he contributed to your career? Absolutely. Are you, are you grateful for his contributions? Uh, yes. I know. Why'd I, you dump him by text then? <laughs> well, that is so lame. I, <laughs> This is the thing. If I had tried to go to Liam in person and end this contract, then he would have tried to talk me out of it, and I didn't yeah, want I to Yeah, I know. Sometimes that. having that face-to-face -face is uncomfortable. That doesn't mean you shouldn't have it. Judge Millian's verdict when justice for the people returns. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. Now here's the thing though, Liam, um, how is it that everyone else has to abide by contracts but not you? You have a contract wherein either party has the right to terminate this contract on August 31st. Of course. Right, so what did she do? She terminated the contract on August 31st. She terminated the contract. So what did she do wrong that would entitle you to then say, I want the party I paid for last week paid by you? What did she, what, for you to come to court and make me, make her pay you, you have to show me that she breached a legal obligation she had to you. So what did she do wrong? The answer is nothing. That's the answer, verdict for the defendant. All rise. Judge Millian has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim is denied. You used me and you abused me. I gave you so much. I gave you so much opportunity and I that you would never have had you your, me, on your own. It's over now, you know? This has been a production of Allen Media Group.